with the name of the person, the location, and the condition that the person needs healing. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Good evening, everyone. It's Sunday evening, hang on, November second. Oh, on you. Go ahead, Joan. Sorry. Good evening, everyone. It's Sunday, November second, two thousand fourteen. Universal Mind Radio, in conjunction with Wolf Spirit Radio, would like to present to you two hours of meditation and reflection by Frank Jordan. Frank is co- accompanied by the Earth Mind Healers Group and has been working with him and them for several years. This evening, Frank will teach us the universal laws of physics, which is metaphysics. The first hour, a discussion is held by Frank, where Stephen talks about subjects of interest to members of the audience. During the second hour, Stephen tunes directly into the listening audience, where healing requests are made, guides the healings, and often gives insightful information about their situation. Stephen is a separate, higher consciousness of Frank that delivers information about the shift of consciousness from the third dimensional world of domination into the fifth dimensional world of dominion. Stephen, through Frank, focuses frequencies of unconditional love into the world group mind that helps people do the necessary subtle energy clearing and DNA assemblage for ascension into dominion. Frank Jordan is from Boise, Idaho, and has been an empathic intuitive for over 40 years. Frank is also in direct contact with galactic beings who are guiding Earth's transition into the fourth and fifth dimensions. He is also an active water, mineral, and missing persons dowser and healing. During his radio shows on Wednesday and Saturday morning, 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, Frank uses his subtle energy techniques to release and ease the stress of Mother Earth from land, sea, climate, and man-made changes around the world. Feel free to tune in to help us ease the burden for Mother Earth. For more information on Frank, please visit his website at www.citronics.com. That's P-S-I-T-R-O-N-I-C-S dot com. Cytronics.com. You are also invited to set up a one-on-one appointment with Frank by calling 208-344-9188. Again, 208-344-9188. His email address is fljordan at cable1.net. Through his website, Frank also has several novels listed dowsing tools, as well as his subtle energy lights and the often sought-after Clearing the Way instruction book. Donations are always appreciated and can be made through the website of Wolf Spirit Radio, Cytronics, and, of course, UniversalMindRadio.com. Now, please, enjoy our show. Thank you, Joan. We we appreciate your comments. And uh, good evening, J.P., how are things on the other side of the world tonight? Uh, well, we've just had a lovely show uh, with uh, she was a, a singer from Estonia. She's uh, she's been writing a book and uh, all sorts of lovely uh, synchronous things and rainbows and spirals and yeah, all good. How are you doing? Well, we're doing well. <laughs> we're uh, moving along here in, in anticipation of, of a lot of changes in the world that are in the process of happening right now, not only in the esoteric world of physics and metaphysics, but in the, the physical world of finances and, and social changes and things of that nature. And I'd like to talk a little bit about that tonight. And um, I'm going to do something a little different tonight. And just kind of invite the uh, the World Healers Group to to contribute thoughts and ideas, and we'll have discussions about uh, about what's coming in the world. About what are we clearing the way to? And we we're talking about clearing the way to higher consciousness, um, and that's that's what I've been actually involved in for like forty years now. Is, is understanding how things work 
in the subtle energy field, not even realizing what I was what I was seeking. But as as things developed in my own consciousness, and I could probe deeper and deeper into my own energy fields. And when I became a healer, I learned to relate to other people through their energy fields and ultimately come to the realization that we're all made the same way, that we're all literally incredible individualized bio-computers, bio-human spiritual computers. And uh, the, uh, the mechanics of the subconscious mind and the conscious mind and the uh, the subtle energy system uh, virtually works the same way with everyone. And the only all difference is being it, whatever they've been programmed into in their their social consciousness and their genetic consciousness from their past histories and their genetic flow and whatever nation or society they might be from, uh, as we're becoming a melting pot around the world now of of, of a unified species where we're not so much individuals in, in our race mind consciousness any longer. But race mind is incredibly important and, and it's what holds the form of reality that patterned earth mind that creates the instinctive consciousness that each, each race draws from. But as we blend and pull together and share our experiences and ideas and, and our, our mutual path, so to speak, and which none of us really have a clue about where we're going with all of this, uh, but with intelligence and education and the wonderful social media and communication system we have now, there is no longer any any any, any lag in, in information. Anything that's known that anyone comes up with, it's new. It, it can instantaneously be, be delivered to the world. And the advantage of that is that there can be no secrets any longer. And... Uh, the disadvantage is it just keeps us hustling all the time to keep up with, with what's going on so we can be in the avant-garde, in the lead, rather than being uh, driven and uh, along at the tail of the herd. So um, let's talk a little bit with the group now. I'd like to introduce Mike, first of all. Uh, there's been some, there is in the process incredible social changes around the world in the financial system. And Mike, having been a, a stockbroker and a, an advisor and spent a better part of his life doing that, he has a great insight in, into the shifts that are happening and, and what is necessary in, in consciousness shift in order to, to change the world. First of all, Mike, um, give us a little overview, if you can, about how things were, what what created the situation, oh God, thousands of years ago that that became domination in the world, and, and where can we go, and what can we do to to change all of that as we move forward into dominion and out of that world of domination? Well, uh, I don't know if I can go thousands of years back, but why don't I? I'll try and keep this kind of as brief as reasonably possible. So that I don't run on as I'm prone to. But, um, let's go back, so, say, several hundred years when maybe the, the current system of domination began to form. And this was the, the origin of banks, banksters. And the, the term bank comes from banco, which is the name of the goldsmith's table in medieval times that they used to work on. And this kind of all started, uh, when goldsmiths figured out that, uh, you know, people used to, people used to store their gold at the goldsmith and they would then withdraw amounts needed to do certain transactions or whatever. And nobody's running around with huge amounts, obviously, of heavy, cumbersome gold, uh, or other precious metals to do their business. Well, the gold, the goldsmiths, some of the bad ones figured out that they could, that nobody came for the gold at the same time and that they could write paper receipts for much more gold than they actually had in their vault. And so this this was the beginning of kind of a paper money system where people you know, just trading goldsmith vouchers, and over time, you know, that that built up. But you know, there's ever since that happened, there's been a temptation for misbehavior, for overuse, for for you know, uh, debasing the whatever system you've got. And uh, there have been you know just a series of, over hundreds of years of 
little panics and collapses and, you know, kill a few goldsmiths here and there and start over again. Um, and that, you know, that has kind of morphed into the fractional reserve banking system. And in 1913, when they, the corrupt Congress, quote, passed the Federal Reserve Act, you know, they've basically gone to a, a, a to attempt to control uh, economies and everything, growth cycles, and control the masses through the the, the fiction of paper money and and a uh, you know virtually virtual global system of central bank control to enforce and manipulate it. So, and that's expanded into securities markets and all these derivatives, and they're all they're all just different variations of paper instruments that that have been made up. So here we are in recent times, and the uh, where we sit today, I think, is, is is a culmination of the of a giant mortgage. You know, these guys got really smart, and they figured that they were going to make the need for basic housing, for basic residential housing and shelter, into a cash cow to make them richer and serve their all their needs. And so we're gonna we're just going to absolutely rob the suckers blind. Which is what they attempted to do, and they got so good at it uh, back here in uh, in the last crisis in say oh seven oh eight oh nine that they nearly uh, tipped over the entire global system. They came real close, and uh, they've been trying to to paper over, cover up, uh, work their way out of out of a debt crisis uh, ever since, and so. Uh, that has been the, the chief method of trying to accomplish that has been to create money, pump money into into assets, pump up the value of assets, hence, you know, increasing everybody's perception of wealth, mainly benefits the, the rich and famous, but keeps the banks uh, allegedly solvent on paper and, uh, you know, makes it, gives an impression that everything's just fine because the stock market keeps going up. And so here we are. On track, where it looks like you know the we're we're, in, we're entering what look like end stages of this, because this can only go on so far. People have already seen you know a lot of people have already seen through it, uh, and that uh, the stocks have done nothing but go up for no reason. Uh, we're oops, I got a problem. Hold on here, I got to mute for a minute. I have a dog population that periodically erupts. Uh, so here we are. It looks like the stock mar- stocks are poised for another push up, which could be a crazy final kind of top. Um, everybody is so sh- the professionals are also shell shocked by it that they don't dare do anything but continue to buy and play along. Because if you if you don't play along and you're a pro quote pro, you know, then you're you risk losing your job. Whereas if you if you get sucked in like everybody else and get caught. And blow up like everybody else, then you're just a dummy like everybody else, and you don't lose your job. Uh, I I put uh, into the into our uh, chat a link to an article that talks about uh, the you know the, this is from a conventional standpoint, but it's highlighting the cracks in the globalization system, the globalization trap where they're trying to you know coordinate and control everything all at the same time and. And it's like whack-a-mole, little crises are popping up here, there, everywhere. And to me, you know, if we view it from our, from our, from our viewpoint, this is, this would be a good sign that they're, they're just, the, the dominators are increasingly losing control. People don't believe it anymore. And, uh, so I would say that then our mission or what we really, you know, we don't, we don't want to collapse despite the fact that, you know, we have certain opinions about the ridiculousness of it all and the the, the morals and this and that. It's not going to do anybody any good to have a disorderly collapse. What we want is a is a somewhat orderly unwinding and transition that will allow everybody to help each other to, you know, begin to more co- cooperate much more closely from a grass level roots up and, you know, start to build the – or building the new – the new um, economy or the new system where where value is created by people uh, providing products and services at the ground level that that help people that alleviate problems like health, the need for food, shelter, 
uh, education, enlightenment, all these kinds of things, you know, like being able to build healing centers and, and, uh, and teach the new paradigms. And so that's, uh, uh, but you know, we want, uh, we want to keep fear out of the equation and we want to, uh, be working in the direction of an orderly transition that just allows people to kind of move away from participating in the old, uh, destructive paradigms and, you know, transition their, their efforts and resources and attention into, uh, new productive, uh, dominion creating, uh, modalities. So there you go. Hello, am I still on? Have I lost the show? You're still on. Keep going. Here, okay. Here, here we go. I have, Who else is on? I think I've talked it up. My mute was on there. Uh, in observing, uh, listening to what you're saying, it, I was observing the history of how we went from a, a, a gold as being the, the means of exchange and silver and hard metals and things that had had intrinsic value because it, there just simply wasn't very much of it. It was, it became a valuable thing or a worthwhile thing to have some of it to trade for, for some other need that you had. But somewhere along the line, like you said, the money changers began to realize that they could substitute paper for money and could greatly multiply the amount of, that they could loan out or, or create out of nothing. But then it got to the point where they didn't even need to have the substance in hard, hard metal or to back what they were loaning or what they were creating. And that was the start of the fiat money system, uh, which was set up when in 1933, I think that's when that started. When they, we went off, they pulled in all of the gold and we went off the, the, the silver standard where uh, the, the paper dollar was no longer backed by a, by a silver dollar. And they, they pulled the wealth in and, and, and replaced it with paper. And that just opened up the whole avenue of fraud and domination and abuse of the system. And now what I see is the, the, the thinkers, the ones that really understand how dominion work, are trying to pull us back into balance again by, by bringing forth a gold back system. China primarily is the leaders in this that, that have been pushing for a gold back system. But my observation is that there just isn't enough gold in the world to back all the, the potential um, need for money out there. What's your opinion on that? Well, there are draw. I mean, it's it's an appealing concept. There's there are drawbacks, and I've uh, one one concern I've heard raised is that well, if we go back to a gold standard, who has all the gold? It's not it's not the people. So. Uh, that just puts us right back in. It's a, just another. It's a switch of domination. So, you know, I don't know what the what the uh, what the answer is. If it's uh, if there's you know something that gets linked to the uh, productive, you know, the people's people's uh, people's productive energy, labor, thought, you know, the the currency generated by the uh, living, you know, uh, the living being. Everybody gets gets an equal value for their contribution and. We all contribute whatever we can, and that somehow there's, you know, exchanges are made for necessities, and uh, you know, so that we don't have, you don't start from a place where you've got some some group that's already got a, you know, uh, got most of the most of the new value currency. Mm-hmm. Well, that's kind of the situation we in this group are in. We recognize the need for some kind of a monetary exchange unit. To, to where we're not exchanging uh, just one item for another, that, that through the medium of exchange, all of our needs can be filled. But to do it in such a manner that it's it's done laterally, to where everyone thinks stays in balance. Uh, yeah. Everyone should be paid for their labors. Uh, the, exper- the experiment has started to break out in the likes of Bitcoin and that, but you know how it actually works out in the end remains to be seen. Everyone should be paid for their labors, but uh, we'll have to develop a system where no one can accumulate more than their needs and use it for power or control or domination or manipulation of anyone else. 
that at the end of the season, say, the first of the year, if one person, because of his, his efforts or whatever, uh, if we had a, a commodity that greatly increased in value or something, rather than destroying that unto himself and, and using it as, as power, that that money would be given back into the system and dispersed out to those who do not have money or, or whatever the unit of exchange is. And it, it keeps everything lateral and basic rather than building up into a pyramid where, like it is now, 5% of the people in the world own 95% of the assets in the world. And those few that are, that are clear down on the bottom of the pyramid have virtually nothing. They're, they're all paupers working for their daily bread and just trying to survive. And it's... And this is what dominion, the principles of dominion that we're creating in this move into the fourth dimension is all about. And we get to create that. And that's why we need to join our active consciousness and following a, a, a directive um, pattern of, of information of energy that's coming from the galactic system. We get to create a system that does function and does work f- for the benefit of the whole, f- for the oneness that we all are. And... Uh, there is some groups now, like you, you said, they're trying to do this. There's one in Africa, Michael Tellinger, creating some, some villages. What do they call that? The, the, the Ubuntu. Ubuntu, yeah. And I, I read about it, and it looks really fascinating. And I think that this could be done and bring our consciousness back from being dominated by government and 45% of the people uh, dependent on government for doles and handouts to sustain the system, that each each village or community or city becomes self-sufficient in their their products and and their and uh, in managing their own affairs and, and take it out of the hands of government, other than just the agencies that we create to be the dis- dis- distributors for the distribution of assets or valuable needs or commodities or whatever we want to create. Well, in that respect, then you start with the individual and you have to create a healthy ego. So it does take like a village to raise a child to be healthy in its ego to where it is going to want to help your fellow brother and sister. And so it, it does begin with the individual. Are you healthy within yourself? Are you, um, is your ego healthy enough to give and take what you only need? Do you love yourself enough that you can extend that love to others and, uh, and give that which they require for sustenance? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Catherine is wonderful because she is, is the pure heart of love. And she came in in this lifetime uh, to spread the understanding of, of the energy and consciousness of love. Because we've been studying here in, in the group Mind Consciousness of, of, our, of our subtle energy group here. Love is the foundation of, of everything. It is the, the God force consciousness it, it, that it not only manifests but holds in form everything. So love basically is a frequency of life, life itself expressing. And as we know about nature, nature is absolutely totally filled with love because everything out there supports each other in one form or another, even right down to where some species contribute their, their lives to sustain others as species that require that. But it's starting right down with, with a field of grass that nurtures the, the, uh, the cloven hooded animals, the unguents, the, and the, the creatures that live on them, the predators and whatnot, it's all a cycle because the predators ultimately give, give back to the system by recycling their very bodies back into the system again. So it, it's an endless cycle of, of sharing energy. And when you take your, uh, take away the, the perception that, that a predator is, is bad, 
then you're not seeing the whole because predators serve a need. Without the predators to, to keep things in balance and keep the population in balance, the populations could easily, in many species, um, overbreed, become overabundant, and they would destruct the environment, not only their own species, but the environment that sustains all other species too. So the predators do have a, have a function. And I, I'm not certain how we could relate that to our, uh, to our um, objective of creating dominion, societies in dominion, other than the fact that, that, uh, how could a predator exist in the human population? Uh, let's let's shift the conscious from being a, the necessity of a predator to control things to a scientist that can study things and and help us limit the population through through choice by not overbreeding and creating too many people more than what the needs of an area um, uh, could support and sustain. Well, that takes knowledge, and that type of knowledge has been um, held back from humankind, um, meaning that different religions have gotten involved in thinking who should or should not, what's important, what's not important. And so if knowledge was freely given to everybody, everybody could make proper choice and decisions. Any other ideas on this? How could dominion work? It works naturally. It's the natural order of things. We've been interfered with. We've been manipulated. We've been, we've been brainwashed. If, if you go to third world countries where people are poor, you find out that actually they live in dominion there. The poor people are more in, in dominion already. They know, already know how to do that. It's not, it's not something you go to school to learn or, or learn from the government. In the last hundred years, uh, the 95% of the population has moved from the farms to the cities. And, and that process uh, has taken away the ability to be self-sustaining and self-proficient and take care of yourself. We have to depend on the system that was created in order to distribute our skills, trade our skills, save for um, for our wants and needs and even food. And so there has to be a, a recycling of energy um, of the structure to, to where uh, – what is it? I think it's less than 3% of the population now are farmers. And when I went to college and studied agriculture, it was 17%. So just in the last 40, 50 years, there's been an incredible reduction of the farm population that's replaced by mechanical uh, means, which is has made us incredibly efficient in our food production and distribution. But it's also made us dependent on the corporations who manage and distribute and take the profit off of what they create. And so uh, it, there could be such a thing as there'd have to be a, a shift back into farm-based communities again. I think that there are some groups uh, that are well, – Becoming very much aware of that, and uh, I know examples of several people who've just unplugged their TV and they've awakened, <laughs> and uh, they are r- realizing that you know there is potentially another way rather than just being force fed uh, what's out there and. Uh, Recognizing those manipulations and and experiencing their own care and their own care for others and there seems to be a common unity like a community of people that uh, are doing it and uh, bless our cotton socks for the internet and to help us uh, become more and more aware of that. And uh, I know for myself, I, I grew up in the bush, uh, the 
forests of northern Ontario on a tiny little self-sustaining farm. And it carries over, uh, those things carry over so that knowledge in, that was learned in my youth, uh, I carry over and I share with others. And we need to, all of us need to open our hearts up and, and share these things with, with others. I mean, we tend to stick with peer groups, but to reach out to the younger, younger folks of where we can, maybe, maybe it's just one person, uh, or two young people, but we share that knowledge and show them, uh, I, you know, using that cliche, the grassroots level, but really where it comes down to is, is sharing knowledge of who we were and those successes and who we can be with those successes. There were a lot of things in our history that were very successful. Like, for example, when, uh, uh, yesterday when Rich was talking about working with people going back in in time in their past lives and not only changing the energy of those things that went wrong in past lives, but those things that went right and carry them forward. And we can look at it on an esoteric level or we can look at it on a a practical level. And when it's practical, people notice and uh, they can learn from it and strengthen their own situations. Uh, it's sh- it's sharing and just on a a genuine level from the heart, and uh, I think we can just reach out, reach out to one person each each of us. Look how many people that are listening here. If everyone reach out to one person uh, at that basic level and shared, and ask them to do the same, the web would just exponentially grow. Break so. through that comfort zone. Reach out to someone mm-hmm. who needs to be enlightened or mm-hmm. more knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. Like uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, I was at the hardware store picking up uh, a tarp because it was raining and I was uh, in need of one. And uh, as I was exiting the door, there was a, a lovely gentleman tr- asking for donations for... Uh, youth in crisis. And I, I kind of chuckled because I said, well, I'm, I gave it the office, so to speak. I'm actually going out right now to help a young person who's in crisis. And so just reaching out um, and staying in touch with with people and build that community on that level. And so I helped this young girl. She's 22 and she had nowhere to go. <clears throat> And desperately needed help to move out of a place. So I just did it. Uh, I want nothing. I don't want anything for it because I know along the way a lot of people have helped me. And I know how, how wonderful that was. And I probably was just clouded with fear at the time and didn't even appreciate what was done for me. And now I can reach out and I can extend that and my heart just swells to know that I'm, I'm helping her and just to see her smile and say thank you was, was reward enough. So. That's the shift of consciousness that's, that's necessary if we're going to save this, this human consciousness here on earth as this human species as it is now without a tremendous reduction in population. Because okay, so there is abundance, there's, there's plenty of resources, plenty of abundance. When it's observed differently, when it's when we take into consideration that if we get have more than our needs, we simply extend it to someone, and through that helping hand that Teresa just mentioned, is to help, and that person in turn will help in some other way. It's a pooling of our resources and our intent to move laterally in consciousness and away from the domination field, which so concentrated the power in so few hands. And in looking at this, the realization is coming that 
that this is exactly what we are doing now um, in working with with this the Wolf Spirit radio program, the thousands of people that we touch out there who listen to us, seeking <coughs> seeking enlightenment and understanding. Um, looking at the history of of social tribal communities, they they did live in dominion. They had the right idea of how to how to how to nurture their resources and share them and sustain them by always giving back and sustaining the source, uh, giving back to the to the um, what they consider to be life itself. To sustain and give it back, that was all patterned into Earth Mind as as the instinctive consciousness that actually prompted humans to to respond in this nature. To, to be, yeah, they fought, they had their territories and things like that. Uh, but it all come back down to when one group would come in and take another group over. Or, or in in domination or for territory, they would blend together and just simply form another consciousness. Which were doing the same thing as had been done previously, but their genes were were shared and their information was shared. So the the social consciousness grew. They evolved a little bit, and that ultimately that is the base consciousness of humans. It is there. It is in Earth mind, but in the last twenty six thousand years. There rose a force of consciousness of domination. The controllers who, who used their ego, their power, their control their, of, of money and territory and weapons and knowledge to take more than their needs to try to control it all. And it, it shifted the consciousness. And that's patterned into Earth mind now to where it's hard for a young person to grow up on the streets out here and uh, look at the world in dominion at, rather than looking at it in, in fear of their very lives and uh, and uh, thinking that they have to be as competitive or as dominating or, or to take what they want rather than trade for it or work for it or share it. That's the, the problem in our ghettos and things. They've been hand-fed and and programmed that the way to get things is to take it from someone else through domination or through hand-me-downs, actual doles to where they're, they're, they're being uh, forced into a situation where they're, they're becoming more and more a passive slave species. And what do you do? Uh, you can only hand out bread as the Romans did for so long to pacify the people. When all of the people rebel and want it all for themselves and take it away from those who have. And that's what the, the, uh, um, dominators are afraid of uh, happening right now in this shift of consciousness is that they're tremendously afraid that the people who rise up and rebel against the system and the, the slavery system, the debt system, uh, they're going to take the power away from the dominators. And if that happens, who's going to lead? Who's going to be, uh, well, who, who will lead are those intelligent ones who are smart enough to recognize how to, how to create dominion and how to make it, uh, how to listen to their instinctive consciousness of how to make right choice and bring everything back into normalcy again as it was when earth was a paradise and there is an earthly paradise coming and it is in the, the higher ranges of the fourth dimension and that's what we keep talking about all the time it and this is the reason why we work to clear the, the negative thought forms and patterns from earth mind that hold the domination instinctive consciousness if we can clear that out of the world consciousness so that people will make right choice instead of responding to pattern wrong choice. Uh, if they, they will elect to understand what dominion is and remember what dominion is through our, our instinctive um, <coughs> genetic cellular consciousness. And also there's the aspect that 
Yeah. We are being programmed and patterned into dominion or, or how to make those right choices by the galactics themselves. This, these are, this is a, the beings who have gone before us and uh, throughout the, the galaxy and, and other civilizations. That consciousness is all out there waiting to help us. They, by universal law, they, they can't dictate to us. We have to develop it ourselves because in, in developing it, we learn. That's exactly what this, this group is doing here. In our discussions and our, our trading information, actually we're trading knowledge that, that knowledge becomes information that we can use as a resource itself to create and manifest and bring into form ideal things. And, uh, so that's just kind of my, the way I see it happening. It, it is a process. And we do have help. And this is what I call listening is, is listening to that deep inner consciousness that is responding, not only to Earth's mind and our own histories, but responding to our future that we're listening to also that is coming back to us and leading us on. So it, it all comes down to every moment is a moment of choice. So as each of us have, each one of us in each moment of opportunity like Teresa did today, she chose to help another person simply to move that one little act of unselfishness, spontaneous unselfishness made an impression on that person and that person will in turn help someone else. And that's the kind of prompting that is, is coming from Earth mind right now from our ancestors that did live in Dominion and come in from the Galactic Center is how to, what is the phrase that's coming out there um, that's becoming common? Uh, spontaneous, <laughs> I forget what it is now, but it's, uh, um, spontaneous it, efforts of Generosity, or well, it's, it's the paying it thing. forward idea. Yeah, but it is, idea? Yeah. It, it is like having a random sp- kindness. There you go, an, an act of random kindness. That's it exactly. Thank you, JP. So let's discuss that a little bit. Acts of random consciousness. What is there in ourselves that needs to be cleared that allows us, in turn? To not think selfishly and protectively and in domination ourselves, but to help us to open up to our, our God force, natural, instinctive, higher consciousness of, of random, random kindness. Any ideas? Start with a smile. No, Catherine, go deeper than that. What's behind that smile? Love and a little dog barking. His <laughs> love. <laughs> a little action, putting it out, just do it. Um, it's as simple as walking down the street or when you're in a car at a stoplight or stop sign, turning and smiling at the people who are next to you and inviting them into the joy of who you are the love that you are, which will help them find the joy and love of who they are. They'll find their own light within. Sometimes they just need somebody to turn the light on for them because they don't know where the switch is. A kind word. Love radiates outward. It's a force that radiates outward, and it radiates dominion, the creativity, Joint cooperation, um, manifestation. Domination, on the other hand, is an energy that draws force from others. Anytime you meet a, a dominator, you'll, you go into instant defense because you feel like they want something from you. They're, they want something for nothing and they'll be taking, seeking to take advantage of you and, uh, or manipulate you in some way. And th- this is the first thing I see we need is to define this in our own minds and, and to learn how through our psychic centers to recognize love, t- true, spontaneous, um, 
generosity, generous, generous giving or sharing of just our energy, if nothing else, our good intent. Um, and let that become the wave that overcomes the dominators, the takers, the controllers, the dominators. Intent. Let's talk about intent. What's the power of intent? Frank and I offer an alternative view for a moment uh, in this regard. Uh, we've talked about a lot of things that are incremental, that somehow we're going to smoothly transition 180 degrees in some smooth, beautiful, sunshiny, incremental process from where we are, and all of us understand that almost every system on the planet is under extreme pressure. It will not sustain. It's not just the financial. It's every element, every institution is feeling it, and we're all feeling it, and that's why we're having this conversation. I would argue probably that for us to move 180 degrees uh, for this planet and for humanity, that incremental smooth change, even in the financial markets, is highly unlikely. Um, from a massive chaos, I believe that's where we will find that change will come, where enough people finally come to the realization that the change has to take place because what has been before simply cannot be again. Uh, and through that chaos, the development of a new consciousness a rebuilding uh, into dominion, uh, and even that would be a gradual process. This is just my offering a different view on how we get there and, and what it is. So I, I hear a lot of people talk about these smooth transitions and how everybody wants it, but this is exactly what humanity has done for thousands of years. When this has arisen, where we had the chance to change, we've gone into incremental processes and not changed. Everybody screams for change. They get what they want. They sit down. They be quiet, and they come right back in again. The dominators come in and take them over right. again. Right. Because they come in. They save the day. They give the people what they want. They pacify them. They sit them down. They shut them up, and then they enslave them again. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that we're going to have a smooth transition. There may be a lot of chaos, but from that chaos, there have to be enough of us who step up and say, wait a minute. This time, we're doing it differently. This okay. time. Okay, David, looking at what you're saying, um, it's making me think of when um, the Soviet Union fell and they started tearing down things. And then even in Germany, when they tore the wall down, that was their chaos. And um, to me, Russia was able not to fall back into the so-called enslavement that they were in before. How did that occur, that they did not fall complacently back into that. Well, they're still in enslavement because they're still here right here with us. They're not they're not walking around in dominion in, in the Soviet Union. They just fell right back into a different enslavement. Ah, uh, different. Okay. Thank See? you. The only so, way it could be done instantaneously is it in a shift of consciousness. Yes. A shift of consciousness that is a spontaneous thing that occurred all around the world. Where we're trying to do it in a progressive manner now, it may take a hundred years. Right. Three or four generations or five to accomplish that. But a shift of, of overall consciousness from domination to dominion, simply by everyone making right choice in respect to not only to them, their caretaking of themselves, but the caretaking of others, could make it happen virtually instantaneously. Yeah, and there has to be enough people to step up to take those those uh, roles to bring that in when that when that chaos is in flow that the dominators don't come in with the answers, that the dominion comes in with the answers, and we move away from that. And even then, we'll still have dominators who need to be mm, taken care of in whatever way. And I'm not even sure that we can really define the entire program of what dominion looks like until we're in the chaos that we need to come out of to really fully understand it. We can conceptualize it, but there will be many things and lots of unhappiness coming from chaos. And none of our systems are going to sustain. They're being held together right now simply because of we think they're being held together, but chaos. Because we don't really see what's really happening in the full aggregate of the world. 
because the truth is withheld at, at massive levels. So we still think things are kind of okay. They're, you know, a little loosey-goosey, but they're okay. But no, they're not okay. You just don't see the truth. We feel it, though. Yes, because if you talk, Yeah, if you talk to people, they're all just, you know, they're not right. Something's wrong. Right, but no one's willing to change that. I, look, I went to an MBA program that taught me how to make billions and take advantage of every human on the planet. Those things still have to change. You're not going to change these by going in and say, hey, guys, would you play nice, please? Well, that system is collapsing out there right now. That the dominator system is is under such stress because it can't because domination always self destructs. That's yes. the fundamental law of the universe. So that all their power structures and controls are collapsing in on them right now. Yes. The thing that can make the transition work easily and magnificently is if. I think George Green predicted mm-hmm. that if if uh, 3%, if that's the right number of the population, would shift into higher consciousness, right. it would spontaneously just, just lighten up the world. Yeah, it, it would. It, it is a very small number, but we have to look. I mean, if we just, just you know, I understand that the religions haven't done the best of the best, but we know that there are 1.5 billion Christians, 1.5 billion Muslims, 1.5 billion of all the other two or three of the larger groups. And they've had two, three, four, five thousand years to do this, and theirs hasn't worked. But there's one great thing that's happening right now that is the leavening agent that is changing everything, and that's the social media on the Internet this is bringing back, bringing yes. the release of those power structures in, in countries like Egypt and, and other dominating countries around the world. Even in China, mm-hmm. communism will fall in China to be replaced by a better system. And, and, uh, it, it's the process. Somehow we had to go through mm-hmm. social, socialism and, and communism and capitalism. To, to determine and experience all the ways that don't work to, to eventually come to one that will. Yeah. Oh, now, dare I throw this in there? So, to me, everything that you're saying is that we are coming back into the divine feminine. We, we are going from a matriarchal type, um, of domination into a, um, Divine feminine. Um, and what is the essence of the divine feminine? Love. Uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> I, I'm just sitting here relishing in in that love feeling, and that's what it is, and that's what everybody comes from. We are all love, and we need to get our egos into that healthy spot to recognize the love that we really are to share with each other. The people who are listening to us out here through the Wolf Spirit Radio system now around the world, and I don't know how many thousand of them there are, but one thing, one essence that comes out of this group is love. We talk about expressing love, unconditional love, and and the fact that the essence of love, it carries the intent, the intent of dominion with it. Can I also add, too, the um, power of the galactic force? For example, last week's session that, that we all had, these uh, photon belt energies and the downloads of energies are enormously potent right now. And what I see is so many of us, the densities within our own bodies are starting to fall away as they will in all the social structures. So there's something happening on the earth that hasn't happened before and Part of it is the galactic flow working with us. There's a power in this. Exactly, because as enough of us begin to make right choice, find love in our hearts, find the divine feminine in each individual self, that divine feminine becomes a resonance that is a reflection of the galactic flow that's coming in. And I'm going to express that right now. I'm opening up to the flow, it's pouring in the back of my head, out my hands, through this computer, out through the system, 
And folks, I welcome you, any and all of you now, just to simply step back within yourselves, out of the frontal lobes of your brain, back into your soul center, and back deeper into the psychic center, where we can reach out and unify our field, and feel this radiance of energy that's available to you. It's all around you. It's just waiting for you to open up and listen and learn about love, how to make right choices. Feel this energy. It's it's a power. It's a force. Just like Rachel said, it, it is the universal consciousness flowing in through our hands now, which is potential. It's incredible potential that is directed by the group mind consciousness of our indwelling souls and our choices to operate, to manifest, to function in dominion that we've been talking about. And we just entered into the photon belt, as Rachel indicated. And this is a band of energy that's, that's out in our, our system, galactic system that we're moving into. We cycle through it, what, I think it's every 24,000 years or eight, 6,000 years or something like that. But there's 2,000 years of opportunity through higher frequencies of consciousness, of God force consciousness, that lifts us up and just through pure radiation helps us to be stimulated, to stimulate our DNA to become more functional. And in this case, in this group that we're working with, because a few of us are accomplishing the, the, the very fact that we're reassembling the strands of our DNA, not from just two strands up to 12, that potential is there within every cell in our bodies. Feel this radiation coming through you now and through those who have already accomplished this, you're resonating the pattern of frequency that is resonating out through this radio program to everyone who's willing to listen and participate and download these energies, these potentials, so that you can begin to think, act, and feel in higher consciousness. That's the process of moving into the fourth dimension. And the fourth dimension is that time-space interval where we learn, we learn who we really are, remember our gifts and our abilities, we reassemble through the DNA strands our gifts and abilities. We become not only psychic, but we become spiritual, we all become healers, healers not only of ourselves, but of our world, and that is what's so drastically needed right now. We were pushed right to the edge of absolute destruction of our world. And that's where we are now. Although, just like David said, it's all very nicely covered up out there. But the world is incredibly sick right now. And we can heal it. It's our responsibility. That's what dominion is all about, as expressed in the first pages of the Bible. And man shall be in dom- dominion of all the creatures of the earth, and the plants that grow, and swim in the seas, in the oceans, and fly in the air. Man shall be in dominion of. That means the caretakers of, not the dominators of, the takers of, or the controllers of, or the destructors of. It's our responsibility as God force beings to learn how to to function and manage this planet, the natural resources of this planet. That's the most essential job we have is to understand and learn what dominion is and to move into that state of consciousness where we are justifiably prepared and ready to move out into the rest of the galaxy and to meet our brothers and sisters out there. They desperately want us to move out there in dominion and not in domination because if we go out there with our hydrogen bombs and our destructive consciousness, they'll meet us right at the, right at the gate and we'll not be allowed to be, go through. Now internalize that. By internalizing, you just take it out of the frontal lobes of your brain, close your eyes, and step back in the mid part of your brain. As you do that, you feel this information in the frontal lobes of your brain. Much of this information is frequencies that are resonating through the galactic flow and through us now coming into you, 
helping you to learn and helping you to just be stimulated to understand how it works and what is needed from each and every one of you. Assimilate that now. Now wrap your awareness around that pressure in your forehead. That's the knowledge that's coming in on the consciousness level from all sources. Pull that knowledge, pull that energy field down to the base of your brain. Open up the base of your brain and just let this energy flood down into your system. You're downloading and assimilating knowledge directly from the galactic center now. Knowledge of how to do this. Now feel your whole body begin to radiate. That's the vibe reports, I call them, in the surface of the body, in the chakra system level. That's in a resonance and attunement with everything in the universe. We are living, radiant biocomputers that are in a direct attunement through this incredible system of bioelectric communication that we have internally and through our psychic system, through our group mind consciousness of our soul consciousness as well as our human consciousness. We have the incredible capacity of mental telepathy, unification of intent, intent simply being the operational function of sending desire and will from the, from the indwelling soul down to the zero point of the heart and through that into the zero point of earth. Do that now. Send our intent in our, the zero point of our heart now, directly into the zero point of earth, and feel that resonate out with the zero point of the sun, the source of all of our incredible energy. And feel yourself just come into enlightened attunement with the sun. Now know that the sun is in enlightened attunement with every other star out there in our galaxy. Reach beyond the sun now into attunement with every star in the galaxy and feel the return flow come back from our brethren out there who are leading us, who are teaching us right now how to do this. And that with the awareness that it it actually can be an audible flow of communication that we've been learning how to work with through our World Healers Group. And we'll demonstrate that for you. Rachel, will you please tune, use the bowl to hit the frequencies to open up the flow to the Galactic Center? Okay. Open your heart to the flow. Let it work within and through you.
feel changes occur in your, your body as you listen. Through your own resonance, reach out through the Wolf Spirit radio system, everyone on the internet, radiate this flow of energy, this information that's coming into us, to everyone out there. And to everyone that you'd like to introduce to this program. Many of you are drawn to this program for healing, and that's the attractant that leads you to us. That's the benefit you'll receive from us. How do we heal on all levels? The greatest healing is this of learning, of enlightenment recognition of who you are and the moreness that you are these energy flows can work directly with the energy you feel pouring out your hands right now with the direction of your indwelling soul to the zero point you can direct these energies and flows to change the frequencies and to further empower that to help you to raise the frequency of anything your intent is focused toward open your forehead now and open it up and just think about the the photon belt, pure light energy out there in space that we're moving through. The photon belt. Let that drop down through your system. 
and the first thing we want to desire, we desire to have, is clarity within our own systems. Clarity to release the dysfunctional and disharmonious patterns and programs of our, of the hard disks of our biocomputer. Let go now. Let this photon energy wash through you, clearing you, releasing, letting go. Clairvoyantly see each one of your chakra levels become a glowing, radiant light. Reflecting the color and frequencies of that chakra level within yourselves. Move into the light. Become the light of the photon bell. Feel your whole system being stimulated. Feel every cell in your body, the assemblage, the assemblage of the DNA in the cells. They'll only assemble to the level of your need. So let your need be enlightened to the degree that you're capable of sustaining that at this time. And there are Many levels of enlightenment and skills, but let's open up and let the process begin. This is what enlightenment is, is internalization of knowledge. So that every day you're a little more enlightened than you were the day before. And the unified field of consciousness that is our our soul consciousness now, our unified field. The deepest desire in our heart is to be in dominion, to resonate love and compassion and understanding to everyone we encounter. So we become radiant living lights with direct, directly radiating the photon energy through us into our field of consciousness and into the world fields of consciousness. Through the power of the Christ within us, we acknowledge who we are, what our potentials are, And allow, allow the galactic center to welcome us into the higher frequencies. Because the reason you're hearing the frequencies you are is because we are of such low frequency that they have to step down incredibly even to communicate with us to this degree. To so lift yourself up into the light. That light that's blazing in your third eye right now. Move out into that light. And it's in the resonance of this in a wave around the world. Every one of you who are anchor points around the world become a a radiant antenna of light now. And this light, this resonance, these frequencies are clearing earth mind of the old domination patterns and forms so people can begin to instinctively make right choice. Through the power of the Christ within us, we acknowledge our, our Christhood. It has always been there. 
It's always been waiting for us to become alert and awake. Stephen is in direct contact with higher beings, realms of consciousness. Open your inner mind now. Let Stephen radiate to you self-awareness of who you really are. And feel it in your heart center as you're we remove the cloaks, the veils of ignorance from your hearts. Move your awareness deep within your heart now to that tiny point of light that is the indwelling spirit, that aspect of the God force consciousness that is the force that holds you and everything in form. Move your awareness into that. Identify with it. Become one with the source. feel a direct unconditional love from that source the creative force of all things into earth mind into the chakra system of earth itself the living devic forces of earth that are the energy forms that hold all living things in being in the subtle energy field Send love into all the innocent fields of consciousness of nature. Express through your heart that we're here to bring nature back into wholeness and fullness. We acknowledge our responsibility and our ability to do this. And we feel the heartbeat and hear the heartbeat of earth responding to us. Now many of you who came to healing for healing tonight know that you are being healed. Simply put your point of attention on your need and feel it happening coming back into harmony with earth releasing all the disharmony that created your conditions whatever they are they are simply there to prompt you to wake up and open up and return into the light Now we direct our attention in our unified field to those in the financial system of the world and we send love and 
information to those who are creating the new financial structure, the transition into dominion. We reach out to our psychic centers with intent to everyone who is involved in the financial world in any way. Send them love and the desire to create harmony and dominion in the banking system. And we're working directly with Earth Mind, resonating this through Earth Mind, through the grid of Earth Mind, around the world, affecting every person involved in the world of finance, helping them to understand the principles of dominion, prompting them to create a process that will be beneficial and workable by everyone. particularly extend to the Chinese people, the entire race, the Oriental races that are becoming the power, financial power structure of the world. They have expressed that they want to bring the world into dominion. So we go into the hearts and minds of every one of them, helping them to understand that, that it becomes a policy of their government to care and be in, in nurturing regard for all the other humans on earth. We direct the galactic flow now to the European financial structure that created the capitalism structure of consciousness and if the Illuminati, the families that hold all the power. We direct to them unconditional love and the inner prompting to use their wealth, to distribute their wealth and the Saint Germain wealth and all that stored wealth that's available distributed back out to the people to create a structure in dominion. They too shall evolve. We hold that desire, expressing only peace and love and empowerment to them. We are no threat to them in any way. They only have in their own manner and form to accept this which is coming rising in our consciousness the true principles of dominion and the universal love of the galactic flow powered by the photon energy of higher frequencies higher potentials within each human on earth 
through the power of the universal consciousness within us. We send the light of love and regard around the world. Now there's a, a block in our throats. That block is in direct resonance. with our root chakra having to do with survival and the need to recognize that every creature on earth has the right to survive according to its own need its own cycles of nature its own desire to express life to its fullest and to pass their genes along for the next generations We recognize and acknowledge our human need, our human agreement to be in dominion of all things on earth, of life having DNA, to nurture, bring into balance the abundance of life, the resources of life, the fulfillment of life. And with that, we bring in the the knowledge of controlling our own populations so we don't uh, over-demand resources. you hear the Galactics talking to us they're talking to us through your heart feel the love the intent the knowledge the empowerment Feel your DNA being reassembled with the knowledge of the galactic flow, the galactic beings, using the photon energy. The reason you can't hear the words is that it's a different language structure. But they send the intent to us through these frequencies of sound incredibly speeded up so that we can hear the and uh, radiate, feel the frequencies directly into our own systems. And our own systems are, are responding through the the light language, 
the language of light. And just step that down so you, uh, Rachel, can you give us a message in the language of light? Yes. Shalomoko hole, shalamakotwa, injiria dwaki ahe amakohoni. Jatori bakahale, shalamakuturi makahani shanama. Andre amuria da kahasalema. Dori makate shalomakohone shane. Aluma etwalia, aluma etwalia. He twa ki shalea dwakima. Inje shalamakundre ama. And so it is. And still holding this connection. Open your eyes. And know that you are a different person. We thank the Galactics. We thank Stephen. And all the light beings who are assisting in this progression of consciousness. Most of all, we feel the love, feel the incredible love pouring into us. We recognize we are radiant beings of love ourselves now. This message has been recorded and is available for download simply by contacting Universal Mind Radio. Gary will break this out, this experience out, so that any of us can continue to reinforce and Stimulate our, our evolution of consciousness by listening to this program. It'll be edited so that we, it'll concentrate on the tones and on the, the information we were given. All right. Would any of the group like to express their thoughts? Frank, that is wonderful. My heart is still glowing. I feel as if I am part of the galactic energy out there. Rachel, what are you feeling? What I feel is um, these incredible downloads of energy that comes from such an, a space of love. Um, after last week, I had an experience with two beings from what we're working with, with the galactic flow, and one of them, the love energy was just, it, it's just incredibly loving and soft and warm. 
and there's light codes and information that I feel like I still get um, um, downloaded and through my sleep I, I get more messages in through the dream state um, and it feels to me that with these heavy loads of light coming down upon us, there's a lot of density in our bodies that are moving out. And so um, I've just been continually using your clearing the way to clear the, especially the lower chakras, um, because I really feel like that light is bumping into that and we're just getting lighter and lighter as these frequencies come into play. And, and and at what level we can handle. That's exactly right. Catherine, what do you feel? I'm going to ask everybody who's listening and pondering what Rachel is speaking of to take their hands, and it matters not if it's left over right or right over left, and place it on your heart. And know that this is where your light is. And direct this light wherever you want within your body, in your mind, in your emotions. And require them to be healed for your highest good. So be it. Teresa? During the uh, the sentence where you said we are beings of light, radiant beings of light, I had found myself uh, traveling to all the places I have been in our country and yours and each of those places, literally from coast to coast in both countries, uh, I was a beacon in light, of light, and it was like this tower just radiating energy and radiating love out in the many, the many places. I didn't limit it, didn't, did not limit my ability to be a beacon to where I am, but rather where all the places I've been from in our our continent, and I could see literally places where I've been literally lighting up on a subtle energy level, and it's and no people noticing. I sense that they could they could feel the the energy, the lightness, even on a, a subtle energy level. Yeah. Kimberly? I definitely uh, felt a lot of what you're talking about, Teresa, and I also have been feeling like I've been traveling with everyone in my dreams um, especially the last week, I feel that I have been waking up in the middle of the night with your faces, the, 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 the pictures of your faces here. I've been seeing you in my dreams. So this is such a beautiful, um, connection that, that we're gathering here weekly and hopefully even more often now. Um, the grid work is really getting done and it's really already secure we're just gonna we're just gonna get to to dance and play and create and build together David what I'm feeling is back where you started talking about intention way back in the program that by all of us bringing the force of our deliberate intention to play Envisioning the new paradigm we're talking about, the growth and the development of the new human being to take this planet. So I think several times a day by focusing that kind of deliberate intention of where it is we want to go at any time during the day, bringing the energy to that, 
we can speed this thing forward and move it into a transitional process while all the other pieces and things that we're working on, that deliberate intention can have magnificent power as it vibrates uh, through uh, this dimension and beyond, actually. So that would be my suggestion. Susan? Um, I was just really feeling out of it. I've been feeling out of it before the program and having physical, um, unsettledness. And with this, it just settled everything out. Um, and I really can't explain it. I'm just kind of out there right now. And it's just kind of sinking in and I feel like I during this as it was my physical disturbances were leaving me and now it's just settling in and that you know I'm really kind of out of it right now so Marilyn For me, it's clearing the clutter. It's like um, the last uh, month or so with this new photon energy that we've been uh, bringing to our, the forefront of our thoughts. It's always been there, but we're thinking about it and and feeling it and how uh, stimulating that is for us on, on, on the deepest of levels. And... It's as if you're in a closed room with your blinds closed and now all of a sudden the blinds are open and it's a new vitality, a new energy. And a cl- it's, I hate to use that word. No, I don't hate to use it. Clearing. Clearing is so powerful. And the light goes on. You don't even have to know specifics. Uh, it just f- starts feeling good all over. Clearing out. That's the way. Gary? I feel good. Uh That's about it. I don't know why. Some kind of mystery going on around here. Jackie? I think I have to um, agree with Marilyn. I'm feeling a lot more clarity. Um, I just feel like everything is moving fast in the world and I'm getting more and more stable in in standing in the middle of the whirlwind, and I think that um, I think that's part of what's been going on with this these downloads. I'm feeling stronger and more reassembled, um, not so split off and scattered. I'm feeling stronger um, mentally and clearer. Great, Dent. I'm feeling much more together than I have for a long time. My health is vastly improved. I'm feeling like the changes that are taking place uh, in the world and in humanity are are taking place at a much rapid, much more rapid pace right now. And it, it causes me a little bit of fatigue. Every day I get really tired really easily but I'm I'm feeling really strong and I'm feeling like I I have hope for the world I have hope for this process that we're going through I feel like we're going to be successful but I also feel like there's going to be a lot of chaos before it gets better before we complete it and it's going to take some more time and I'm just looking forward to each day getting up and being able to be with people that I care about and and try and be of service to someone other than myself each day try to do something that is unselfish and 
do my meditation and play music, love my animals. Um, I'm doing really well. I'm I'm very very pleased with my life at this point. Uh, as as it's not like everything is perfect, but everything is much better than it has been <laughs> over the last five or six years. Mm-hmm. Mike, what was the question, Frank? I was gone. <laughs> well, we're just. How are you feeling? How did how did you this this session tonight affect you? And uh, they, you know, they. I always get way out in the trance, and I. I know that I'm I'm downloading and I'm just absorbing and I'm like I'm in a nirvana like state and uh invariably if I'm tired when when we start if I'm tired or discouraged or whatever my condition always improves and uh I always feel uh stronger you know more stable more calm uh you know fear goes away um agitation goes away so it's a, it's a you know it's it's been a real uh, solid stabilizing factor in my life and a key element for the last uh, three years whenever we started. Joan, would you like to contribute more? Well, as I was floating through the meditation, I was just receiving such a download. Um, I was meandering through the universe and all of a sudden this light came into my head felt like someone turned a bright light on in the room it was pretty powerful for me this evening um i don't feel scattered i don't feel completely grounded right now either but uh through the use of your subtle lights i've noticed a huge difference in clearing through my lower chakras that has helped me advance dr- dramatically. Mm-hmm. Um, you're clearing the way book just outlines everything that does need to be cleared and how to do it. I'm very thankful for that. We're moving into a new progression here in this work that we're doing with this radio program. We we're through our our apprentice stage now, and the folks that are listening to us out there are certainly capable of feeling what's happening. And I'd like to offer to the folks that don't have the other tools a, a new set of tools that Joan and I recognize can be tremendously beneficial to you, just to help you to tune into. The, what we're working with here in in the uh, uh, World Healers Group. Um, Joan has, we call her the Crystal Lady, because of a mine she's been associated with, mining crystals. She has some incredibly beautiful smoky and amethyst crystals that when you hold them in your left hand, they turn you into the earth energies. And she has some beautiful, clear, um, what would you call them, Jane? Joan, um, um. Oh, the clear crystal points, uh, they've all helped entice the aura healing in all of our workshops. They're very strong crystals. When you hold that in your right hand, that helps to tune you into the oversoul and the higher frequency ranges. And so between the two, working through your heart center, it, it helps you to get into these states of consciousness that we're working with. And not only that, is when you're holding these things, if you think about myself or the, the, these meditations or listen to one of these meditations, it, it'll open the channels in your system and help you to come into attunement with these higher frequencies and the photon energy and everything. And uh, we have these available. They come with a small set of instructions on what to do with them. And um, they come in a bag. And our suggestion is that once you 
Well, the magical thing about these crystals, it's not magical. It's very scientific. It holds your energy. And I've witnessed this with things that Frank has around his house. When he holds these crystals, he is programming them with his energy, with his healing powers. When I pick them up, I instantly start absorbing the same vibration. The crystals just extend this vibration into my body, and it's very powerful. I think that's the point I was trying to get to, is that you can use these crystals to uh, those of you who are are coming to us for healing. um, Once you have these crystals in your hand, all you have to do is think about me and, and... the healing, you really become a self-healer because these frequencies of energy will come through to the galactic flow in whatever form you want to use them. And you can certainly send them on to others also. So these are available and um, um, we're just putting them on. Uh, email me, fljordan at cable1.net. And I'll give you the, the information on on these and arrange for a, a specific patterning for whatever your problems are or whatever you want to achieve. If you want to gain just the clarity, we can program clearing energy and frequencies into them. Um, if you're going for enlightenment and higher consciousness, that is going to happen spontaneously as you hold it those during these these programs and these programs are going to be more and more intense now I, I can tell that because I was downloading into me through Stephen tonight uh, the, the understanding of the progression we are in in moving into into literally helping to, to uh, change world consciousness so if, just email me at fljordan at cable1.net and I'll send you the information I can send you a small notation on how to work with these crystals. Mm -hmm. The most beneficial. We'll soon have them on Cytronics, too, as soon as we can get them into the website. They're amazing. All right. Does anyone else have any contributions? Well, Frank, I think going to your website at www.citronics.com, P-S-I-T-R-O-N-I-C-S.com, can give the listeners a little more information on the books that you're writing and your Clearing the Way novel, which can help them with their clearing techniques that the crystals can also enhance. Yeah, and there's information there on the lights, too. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. JP, um, how did you, what did you experience during the meditation? And this was a spontaneous meditation now that we're working directly with the galactic flows. This is, is what they've been leading us to for a long time. What did you think of it, JP? I've been, um, I've been, uh, Doing stuff around the house, uh, not really doing much of the meditation tonight because uh, it's been pretty busy here the last couple of weeks. So um, I'm, uh, I'm okay. not, uh, completely involved in the situation. But uh, the energy is definitely moving and we're definitely, as you say, bit by bit, day by day, things become clearer. Uh, people become easier to move on. From difficult situations. That's, I think, the, is the latency is moving. You may get feedback from this, from your people about this program and those frequencies that come in. We understand now better what to do with them, that I can work right, right within them uh, to accomplish things. And uh, and uh, so that's, that's a step upward in, in awareness. Before we were just kind of subjective, letting them work through us, but now we're learning how to use them to accomplish things. So you may get. I have a question for JP. How did the the tidying up go during the meditation? Was it going easy for you to do the tidying up that you were doing? Um, Yeah, I mean, it's uh, 
it's pretty it's been a pretty harmonious day i have to say things have harmonized out since this last bunch of solar flares everything's like it's kind of jiggles everybody so everything's dropped into place it's quite a, a nice feeling okay yeah. and um yeah it's it's been a busy but pleasant evening here anyway uh i think we need to uh wrap the show up could uh, i ask for one healing request please I have a dear friend Horst Eichholzer he's 75 years old lives nearby in Belmont Canada and he has he experiences uh, heart heartbeat of a heartbeat of approximately 40 beats per minute which is probably slower than most and he he doesn't wish to ever uh, have to use a uh, pacemaker I know Horace I met him on our visit up Mm -hmm. there to that area all right let's just focus our attention on Horace Eckholzer Belmont Canada And we're just wrapping him in a flow of energy now that will revitalize his entire system. It will stimulate his his life pros- processes. It will generate in his heart the vitality to resume natural function again, stimulating the f- potassium in his heart and tell him to eat more potassium if he's not Teresa I think that's one of the fuels that fires All right, Horace, that, that should do it for you. He should resume normal activity now very quickly, bringing in his own life force, his own life flow, stimulating that. And he, he is listening in, so. Oh, very can, good. Mm-hmm. Horace, get more interested in life again. Don't look back, look ahead at what you can do with your life if you're healthy and vital again. And, be creative and interested and, and invite back in functional things you can do with your life that keeps you interested because your whole system responds to that. Uh, you're gradually just kind of slowing down and preparing to check out. So let's reverse that process because I enjoyed you very much when I met you and, and look forward to seeing you again. All right, JP. Thank you very much. We all thank you for your services. And and uh, I, I think to, tonight was a tremendous empowerment of everything moving forward in the world. And, and uh, with, with really sincerely appreciate your, your enabling us to do this. Any comments from anyone else? Well, thank, thank you thank for you. all. If anyone is interested, please tune in Wednesday and Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you, JP. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, all. Bye.